video on my YouTube channel. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a simple chat program using Python. So without any further delays let's just get into it. First of all I'm going to create a new folder destination for, for this whole project. I'm going to be calling this project as chat program or let's just call it chat program okay next we're going to open this program this is going to be a bit messy i like keeping it folded in one directory so i'm going to start with create opening my python gui so if you can open python it's going to take a second to load up Once you've got Python opened up, click File, New File, and in this file, we're, we're necessarily going to be needing two files. One's going to be the server, and the other file is going to be the client. I'm going to be talking about more of that in further, further into this video. So let's just save this one as server.py. Into our folder on the desktop. Workspace. So that's the first file saved and done. We can put this. Just close this one. Put this on this side of the screen. And another new file. We can close this now. Place this this side. And let's save this one as. Let's call it client.py. We'll go back to our desktop and save it into the same place as we did for the server so that we have no clash later we can find it easily I'm just gonna start so first of all we what we need to start doing is start coding the server.py so we need to to have a network communication between a program on localhost we're gonna start by making this chat program just work on localhost so for now let's just stick to working on localhost so we're going to need something that's called a socket, which is an inbuilt library in Python, which helps us do stuff related to networking. So once we've imported socket, we're also going to import system and we're going to import time as well. Try out some effects later. So once that's done, that's the end of imports. So that would mean that the program's done importing everything right there. That's the comments. So we need a variable section. This this bit of the program is the initialization section. So this bit of the program decides. I mean, create the, it lets the program know its IP address and all that good stuff like the port. So we create a new variable called host, and we say host equals socket dot get post name so what this basically does is it gets the local host name of your device so if I say print host and if I run this program right now we'll basically be able to get uh, the name of my laptop which is desktop OAD N5CD so that's the local host for my laptop. That's the ho that's going to be the host for the whole connection. So we need to set a port as well. So we're going to create a new variable for port. We'll equal it to any number of your choice. But for now, I'm just going to stick to 8080. Make sure the port you're using is free on your local host and is not in use. Otherwise, we're going to be having a number of errors. So we do not need to print that anymore. Instead of that, what we can do to make it look good is we could say server will start on post close that comma and that should give it a nice effect as well so you run it right now we should be able to see that it says the server is going to be running on the host which is desktop OAD N5 CD okay so let's get rid of once we're done with the fancy stuff we're going to start working on the actual connections so once we're done with the initialization, we're still onto the initialization. So next step would be saying 
getting a socket up. So we create a new variable called s. We'll equal it to socket. No socket. For now, I'll just write this down because this is gonna. We're gonna be calling this function on and on again. You will understand what it is later into the tutorial. So for now, we need to bind the socket with. Before we start listening for any incoming connections, we need to bind the socket with the host and the port. So it's a tuple, so we need two brackets. Once it's done binding, we could create a message saying that server done binding to host and port successfully. Okay, once that's done, we can start we can now start listening for incoming connections. So we say s which is socket dot listen. So in this we need to give inside the bracket we need to write the number of connections we'll be looking to accept. For now let's just keep it to one because obviously we have only one client. In the future you can make more client side programs and leave it on one side. So I say s dot listen one and then we'll say Well, so to once we start listening, if there's any incoming connections at the given host and given port 8080, then we'll say we'll create a new variable, two variables, so connection and address equals s dot accept. So what this does is the first variable, which is connection, is assigned to the socket itself, which is which is the physical socket coming from the client and address is assigned to the IP address of the client that's going to be connecting. So at any point, if we say print ADDR, it's going to print up the IP address or the host name of the program that's connected to us. For now, it's going to be obviously the desktop, same, same address because I'm running it on the same laptop, but you could leave the client side program on another laptop or computer on your local host and it should still work. So for now we'll say once, so if we have any incoming connections, we need to let the user know by printing out. So we'll say print ADDR comma has connected to the server and is now online, okay? So once anyone connects to the server, it's going to say his address and it's going to say he's connected to the server and is now online. Once we've done that bit, we're going to move on to the next bit of the program. I mean, we're going to move on to programming the client.py. So it's pretty much the same here. So we're going to import socket and import system as well. We're going to import time. And then we could do the same initialization process because we need a socket in this program as well. We need a host as well. So host equals input string. Please enter the host name of the server. So here you're going to need to enter the this host name, which will be printed right here, we're going to have to copy that and paste it in here in order for it to obtain the host. Post by default, we can leave it to 8080, or we could create another import if you want to be a bit more complicated with it. And then the next step is once we've got our host and port, we can do s dot connect to the host and port that's given. If it's successful, it's going to say print connected to chat server otherwise it's just it's just going to split out an error so for now we've got two programs ready first of all i'm going to be running our server hopefully there are no errors on there yes so server will start on host desktop blah 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 server done binding to host and port successfully and what we need to do now is we need to create another line of code saying 
server is waiting for in coming connections. So this way we know that the server is actually up. Just another line of code makes it a little bit more prettier. So there it goes, and it's still now it's waiting. So if we run the server right now, we run the client side program, which is client.py, and uh, it's executing in the same shell. So what I'm going to do for now is shut this down and open it again because it's executing in the same shell. We need to execute. We need it to execute in two different shells, otherwise it's not going to work out. Assuming, assuming that we're opening the client program on another computer, I'm going to run the client program right now. I'm just going to wait till it opens up. It's open. Leave it on this side, run the server. And then run the client. Yeah, there we go. That's what I was looking for. So first of all, it just asks us for the host name as we programmed it to. So we copy this host name and we enter it right here. This can be another computer. And once we press enter, bang, we have an incoming connection. The IP address shows up here. It says it's connected to the server and is now online. One, and it says connected to the chat server. There we go, guys. We've all almost done tunneling ourselves. So we've got a connection. All we need to do is now send packets across and that will create a chat program for us. So for that, what we need to do is we need to type, create a new variable called message equals input string. Let's just do this, which symbols for enter your message, obviously. So once we're done typing, typing our message, we need to convert this message, which is which at the moment, which is decoded, we need to change it into bytes. So to change the message into bytes, because the interface of socket only, it only supports bytes. So we need to convert the message into bytes. So we say message equals message dot encode. So we're overwriting the variable, but at the same time, we're changing it into bytes. So once we're done with that, we take connection, which is our client that connected to us. And we say, Connection dot send our message, and then we say print has been sent. Okay, so once we send the message, and that's it. So we've sent we once we've written that much, we are successfully going to be able to send the message. So on this side, we need to write a piece of code that somehow is able to accept this message and display it to you guys that's easy enough so we do s which is the which is the server we've connected to post in the port s dot recv which is a short form for receive is an internal function in socket and then we type in the amount of bytes so one letter can stand for one byte sometimes and it can sometimes exceed, exceed that limit as well so for now we're going to stick to 1024 bytes per package and we're going to say incoming message equals s dot receive one zero two four, and then once that's done, once you type in a message here and hit enter, it will be received here, and it's going to be stored inside incoming message. So once that's done, we need to decode. Since we encoded it the last time, we need to decode it so that it can be displayed to the user screen, which is the client screen. So incoming message equals incoming message dot decode. So just as we did for encode, we do the opposite of, of encode, which is decode. And then we have our message. And we can finally print off the message saying server outputted so and so incoming message. And that should be it. So for now, we're just going to run this one-sided program. I'm going to run this quickly. And we're going to run the other program as well. So here we are. There's the server up, and here's the client. So uh, I'm assuming I still have the, yeah, we have the address. Press connect. 
and once we're connected it's asking us to enter a message we'll say hello okay we'll say hey it says message has been sent and if we see here voila it says server said hey and there we go guys we have our one side chat but the problem is that we need to continue it a bit further we need to put it in a loop so to put anything in a loop an endless loop what we need to do is write while true or while one is a short form for while true so that puts it in a loop and then press tab two to three times and then while oops. so after the connection is done we will do a loop just after that we're gonna do a loop quick loop well, one and press tab a couple of times okay so once that's done so in this program now once we've sent the message we need to put the program to listening mode so that we can get a, an incoming message as well so incoming message or what you could do to make life easier is copy this bit of the program paste it right here and then instead of server just change this to client because that's the same thing as doing right here we're just swapping apart the functions and then we can copy this bit and down here paste it right here run the program again and I'm pretty sure it should work like a normal chat program would. So once we run it, the server takes a bit to load. Load it up. Let's just leave it on this side of the screen. Let's load up the client, which can be on another computer as well. And then we can leave it on the right side of the screen once it started loading up. We can paste the address. Nope. That's not the address. It's going to come up with an error. A big one. Okay, we need to get rid of it individually, apparently. So we get this bit of the address, copy it, paste it, hit enter, we're connected, and we can say hello there. Okay, so a bit of a mistake there, because the, the thing here is that it's not S, but it's connection, so we press connection instead, and then so you need to change this into into connection instead of the s and then you need to change this into sorry change this into s instead of the connection and it should work damn <laughs>